A real roller coaster is attached to the track, so it is unlikely that it would fall off if it was going too slowly around the loop. But with sufficient speed, it should be able to go upside down without losing contact with the track. Similarly, the roller coaster can lose contact at the top of a hill if it goes too fast. What speed is necessary for that to happen? In this simulation, there are two forces at play. The gravitational force always points downward. The normal force always points towards the coaster from the track. If the coaster is accelerating upward, this means an upward normal force is exceeding the gravitational force and the net force is upward. If the coaster is accelerating downward, this means the net force is downward. This could be because the normal force points downward, such as at the top of the loop, or because an upward normal force is smaller than gravity, such as the top of a hill. When moving in a circle, the net force is said to be centripetal. We imagine a roller coaster at the bottom or top of a loop as going in a circle. Likewise, when the coaster goes over the top of a hill, that is also like moving in a circle. We are neglecting friction in the simulation, which means that the mechanical energy of the coaster is conserved. As it exchanges gravitational potential energy for kinetic energy, it moves more or less quickly. At the top of the loop, the speed of the coaster can be calculated by the difference in potential energy compared to its value at the top of the hill. The net centripetal force can then be calculated based on this speed. The net force is the sum of the normal and gravitational forces. Since we know the coaster's weight, we can now figure out the normal force. What happens if the coaster is going more slowly? Then the net force is lower and the normal force must be smaller. At a low enough speed, the normal force disappears, as it can only add to the net force at the top of the loop. This is the point at which the coaster loses contact with the track. The coaster falls. In general, it is worth remembering that when two objects lose contact, the normal force acting between them vanishes. When solving problems about loss of contact, then, our strategy should be to begin by setting the normal force equal to zero. A similar strategy is needed when we get to the hill at the end of the track. The gravitational force points downward, and the normal force points upward. The amount by which the gravitational force exceeds the normal force is the net force. This is the centripetal force. If the speed is high and the centripetal force required to keep the coaster moving in a circle is therefore also high, the normal force must be low. At a certain point, the normal force vanishes and the coaster loses contact with the track. At some points, such as the two sides of the loop rather than the top or bottom, only the normal force is centripetal, not the gravitational force. Keep this in mind when problem solving. At the start of the simulation, we asked, how can the roller coaster go upside down without falling? It's a bit of a trick question. When the roller coaster is upside down, it is accelerating downward, and it does end up at the bottom of the loop eventually. If it had little or no contact with the track during that time, perhaps it did fall. A similar question can be asked of an astronaut in orbit around the Earth. They are falling the entire time, yet to never hit the ground. This is why they feel weightless. 